beautiful campsite here perched up on um, what the hell am I on I don't know but uh, perched up high above the river here foggy and and uh, hazy but also forest fire smoke all mixed together are giving us this really cool enchanting look this morning and um, another great place to have a cup of coffee that's for sure I'm just charging up my Bluetti EB3A here I have the solar panel laid down this hill here and it's getting some good sunlight now that the haze is kind of cleared up en uh, enough um, it's working pretty well which is good to see this is what I keep all my camera batteries charged with so it's been constantly constantly running for over seven days now and it's been giving me all the battery power I need charging my drone etc etc using the solar panel it takes a charge quickly as fast as any other solar device really and the same thing if you plug it into the wall it charges up very fast of course i don't have that option out here why did i bring my hair dryer just kidding it also has a place you can charge your smartphone on the top and uh, when i'm out here i actually use my smartphone as my backup gps uh, i download maps into it so I, i've been using that as well pretty sweet bloody eb3a if you can see some tape around here that's because i taped the input in and that way while i'm traveling um, the uh, input doesn't pop out when i'm hitting rapids and stuff like that works pretty well pretty freaking impressive device so that's what's that's what's keeping things charged and it's a workhorse it's doing the trick to the naked eye this doesn't really look like much, but to me, this looks like a large old structure. And I mean very old, considering that that tree right there is probably 80 to 100 years old. And it's growing in what is now the middle of this structure. So that's a right angle there. And then there's another one on that side. And it goes for almost 30 feet in this direction. So a very large rectangle here. A fire came through here, maybe burnt whatever re remnants of the cabin were left whenever that tree burnt. Judging by the fact on how decayed this is and that you can barely notice it, you know, we're talking about something that could be a couple hundred years old, um, if not more even. Just judging the size of these trees growing out of it, here and here, those are growing in what would have been the middle of the structure. Why wouldn't you build a cabin a little closer to the creek for water, or a little closer to the river? I mean, it's a nice flat spot and it'd take time for this to erode away. But yeah, you'd see this kind of almost rectangular hump right here. And then this log running right along here. You can see a little hump like that and the right angle back this way. You know, it could have been a cabin and a shed or a cabin and a cache potentially. Some structure that was built by people a very long time ago uh, was built right here. These could just be drainage ditches, but in this kind of ground, when you wear a trail, it can last for a very long time. And so this potentially looks like it could be a bit of a trail heading right up to the site there of what might have been a cabin. Anyways, pretty interesting. Uh, beautiful place to build a cabin or to spend large portions of the time. I know that there's definitely dull sheep trails in the mountains here, which uh, the Gwich'in hunted um, and still do hunt, and uh, probably caribou in the area as well. Um, it's an area where uh, it's going to be very hard if you're traveling up river to get through that canyon at certain water levels so it might be an area where a staging area um, or just a good spot to call home and of course to this day i mean this is probably one of the best places to camp along the heart river in its entirety and a lot of the time when you find a place that it's good to camp well it's been a good place to camp for many 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 years and those are places where you can often find traces of people who'd passed this way many many centuries before or even you know a hundred years 40 years and unfortunately a <laughs> couple years couple days and that's garbage from modern day travelers um, you know fire rings and stuff like that one of the things i found here was a spike nail too um, which is a strange thing to find uh, something that might have been used to set up a wall tent 
um, looked like it's probably circa 1980 or something like that but um, you know one of the things I noticed too traveling some of the Arctic rivers is that when my brother and I would find a really good fishing hole um, it would turn out just up the hill from the river there'd be uh, an Inuit campsite there and a bunch of stone tent rings maybe a cache in the area where other people had camped so when you see a good site when you're traveling in these wild northern areas chances are first peoples many many years ago saw a good campsite there as well and uh, to be putting your feet where those people's feet were is somehow really amazing i think even just getting a tiny glimpse into what their lives were like kind of puts your mind back in time to when things were a little bit different to when people lived differently and uh i don't know just really enriches the whole experience out here well it's looking like i won't get to them today but i do have some intense rapids class three canyon that uh ever has a place in the back of my mind as approaching and I'm probably gonna want the spray deck for that, so I don't need it today, but it's a half decent spot to put it on and I might as well just slap it on, get it over with. Okay, I got one side lashed down. Now I do the same thing on the other side. All right, there we go. Spray deck on and solar panel re-rigged up. So I'm getting on the river probably about 11.30, not ideal, but I don't have a super far to make it today, so I should be okay. Anyways, here we go. Looks like the river got murkier overnight there was some thunder and a little bit of drizzle last night so my guess is it must have uh, rained up river and those tributaries got full of silt which washed in here but it's almost a brown color right now well yesterday it was uh, a blue There's a ledge here. bald eagle perched on top of this pillar look the bald eagle is the gatekeeper of this rapid must have a nest up there I'm gonna call this bald eagle rapids Hi Eagle! It's looking right at me. You can probably pick out the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Show me your dick! Paddling on for a bit. And I get a funny feeling. I literally could just had that feeling that something was staring at me. And I look back and the eagle is clearly still staring at me. tricky paddling moments of the trip but uh, some of the biggest standing waves yet Out. This is a, a side slaw. I see a beaver dam up there though, but it's a, a side slaw that a tributary creek enters and uh, beavers are 
have it dammed up pretty substantially. I was going to jump out and take a couple casts here, see if we can get any fish. The tributary that comes in just above that beaver dam, I guess, isn't bringing enough clear water in. So uh, maybe it's just, um, you know, too uh, too cloudy. The water's not clear enough here for there to be fish. And it seems like after the rain we got last night and just all the tributaries bringing in loads of silt with them that we don't have a clear water river anymore. Uh, so it's going to be trickier to catch fish. I'm going to have to focus more on the clear water tributaries and, and you know, obviously try any back eddies and stuff. But uh, they could just not be biting because it still looks like a decent spot. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. So there's that beaver dam, but uh, yeah, just a little trickle coming through it. Looks like clear water, but not clear enough. Grayling, yes, just in this little side slot. A mountain runoff creek. This river is just like surreal. It's so awesome. is re-entering the main river but it looks clear just where there's a, a back eddy little grayling too small to keep no point in uh Busting out the fly rod. I haven't been uh, fly casting today mainly because of the wind. It's really gusty and windy. And, um, you know, I also just want to bust out my spinning rod because it's quicker. Take a couple casts. If I get a bite, then I'll go fly rod and spend a little more time. But yeah, this spot isn't too promising. I took several casts and only caught one small one. Well, there's been a few uh, rapids today, which are just basically wave trains. But, uh, Pretty smooth sailing for this last little part. Scenery's not quite as good as when I was in those canyons, but still amazing. Yeah, I think I, I don't think I'm gonna push on and try to make it more than 25K today. Um, so basically I'm gonna try to make it about another 7K and look for a spot to camp. Hopefully somewhere as usual with decent fishing. But uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful day on the water. It'd be nice if I'd seen a little bit of wildlife, but uh, can't complain.
Bald eagle. tributary could be some fish in this tributary here not exactly rolling in with any momentum though sometimes when they come in fast they make a bit of an eddy but it's clear dinner's about to be caught ladies and germs there is the tributary Yes, okay, so far first cast was a nice grayling. Oh yeah, first cast baby, first cast. Yes. Oh, there's that bald eagle. I have its fishing hole. Maybe it's fished it out. Got one here. There she is. Yes. I gotta say, this has gotta be the best fishing hole of the whole trip yet. Maybe not as big average size as some of them upriver, but I just put away the fly rod and uh, I said, okay, I'll take a couple casts with this spinning rod before I push off. And I've just been here catching and releasing fish after fish, literally on almost every cast. Watch this, just quick cast out, boom, fish. And I'm, I'm fishing with only two hooks that are barbless on this as well. Look, just endless amount of fish. That's a smaller one. I'm gonna push on, but it's almost seven. So between putting the spray deck on, but I'll have done my 25K today. Look at that, another one. Every cast, I'm telling you guys, this is magical. This is a good one too. Look at that chunker. Noticeably larger. I've already kept three, so that's probably enough for me to eat. <sighs> Goodbye, enchanted fishing hole. I love you. into those boils. So sketchy, one of the most unpredictable things. So they spun me around. And well, next thing you know, I'm paddling the rapid backwards. Scariest uh, part of the trip yet. <laughs> yeah, just a really strong endy line. And just 
high volume boils coming up like that it's like if you put your hand under water and push like that and the water goes but your hand never breaks the surface of the water that's what a boil is all you can do is make some sort of reactionary move you can't uh, plan for it because there's no predicting them at all well I think I found what is going to be home for the night there's a tributary here with clear water not a very big one and uh, nice fishing eddy I bet you it's a good fishing hole and not too many big boulders so I don't know I'm gonna jump out and check it out very spirited eddy out to boot yeah, it won't be a good fishing hole. The tributary itself is darker. It's like a brown color, um, like a rust, like um, iron ore, rich in iron ore for sure. But it's darker than the, the main branch. Too bad, because I thought it'd be a good water source, but. As long as the river's not too cloudy or milky, as it's often called, there'll be fish in most good back eddies. It's just uh, the clear ones are where it's loaded the clear tributaries or just crystal clear rivers no, this one isn't most aren't but the crystal clear parts of this one were better than here see the the stain the orange stain that's from uh, iron ore deposits well this looks okay i guess it looks kind of wet and not the best Yeah, I'm gonna bail on this spot. Too bad. Tributary's got water in it, just the water stain. Fishing's not good, and more importantly, there's pretty much nowhere for a tent that doesn't suck into these boils again. Okay, this is gonna be the spot. Looks a little rocky, a little lumpy, but uh, might have to just bust out my inflatable ground pad and deal with it. Other than that, it looks good. Looks like there's some wood here. Not so windy, beautiful surroundings. I'll take it. I'll take it, gosh darn it. Maybe I can move some of the bigger boulders. But I gotta stop. I can't keep pushing on, it's so late. Ah, what a nice evening. Man, compared to uh, the weather is getting last year on the bonnet plume, this is like, I had frost in July. I mean, I didn't mind, I was prepared for it. It's the Northern Yukon, but there was cold rain. Never really got too warm. I was paddling in a sweater. Complete <laughs> opposite this time. This little metallic color thing, which is key for that to slip on, is gone. So I don't know if it came loose and it slid down inside one of the uh, poles. I, I looked in there, I can't see it. I don't know how it would have disappeared. So I splinted it with some saplings. Dizzy, I'm dizzy. Oh, 
always plenty of uh, driftwood on these gravel bars. I just had to go into the bushes over there and find some that was kind of washed up against the bushes and drift piles from higher water times. And uh, just at the foot of this beautiful mountain after coming through that canyon today, really, really awesome. Uh, hitting that epic fishing hole, the bald eagle staring at me. And uh, that little that little kind of cove I went into where I saw those bald eagle prints and the beaver dam. And just of course the scenery all around made it a pretty special day. Fresh fish. Nothing like it, I'm telling you. 